Hello, this is Nathan Wood, pastor of North Dayton Baptist Church, and welcome to day seven of the McShane Reading Plan. Uh, we're in Genesis 7, Acts 7, Matthew 7, and Ezra 7. That's not necessarily the order, but um, in the wake of yesterday's events, I have a heavy heart. Um, my heart mourns for the country, as many of you, I'm sure, do as well. My heart mourns uh, for individuals who um, sought uh, sought their um, voices to be heard by uh, desecrating and and um, I don't and more violating the halls of government um, by violently uh, acting against uh, police. Um, there's a lot of unrest and a lot of division now and it hurts my heart and um, I just want to look at uh, our scripture Genesis 7, Matthew 7, Ezra 7 and Acts chapter 7 I want to see if uh, our readings today might have some some comfort and some conviction regarding Christ-likeness and how we need to conduct ourselves. This is not a political lesson today. I'm not taking any sort of political stand. I have political and ideological uh, position, but I'm my first loyalty is to the Lord Jesus Christ and to proclaim his love for everyone. Not that he loves the sinful deeds that we do, but he loves everyone. I really believe that. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Noah was faithful through ridicule and hundreds of years of it to not lash out against those that were rejecting him and scoffing him, but to finish his work that God had for him and his purpose and trust in God's mercy for him. And God worked through him. Yeah, the earth was never the same. But God saved him and blessed him and made him the new um, ancestor of all of humanity. The um, the case of Ezra. Ezra was called to build. Yes, sometimes defend from those who sought him harm. And most of the time that was defending politically and, and thwarting the lies of and deceit of those around him. Yes, that's real. But his primary objective was his role as priest, worshiping the Lord and guiding the people in worship and in sacrifice to the Lord and building the temple, and in uh, rebuilding Jerusalem. And he saw it during his lifetime. There would be no restoration of the Davidic throne. Jerusalem would no longer have its former glory. The, the, the Jews, some of them stayed behind. Even Daniel stayed behind. It wasn't going to be the same in his lifetime. It wasn't as glorious as it had been in the days of David and Solomon. But he was still faithful to the Lord in spite of everything. In spite of everything. Excuse me. Jesus, in the, um, in the continuation of the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 7, talks about how the path to destruction is wide. And there's a lot of people on it. Folks, if we're... If we are carrying his name, if we're crying, Lord, Lord, we need to make sure that we're on the narrow way and not just acting like uh, we're trying to get God on our side. We need to make sure that we're not running with the wrong crowd. Um, not saying that, not saying that things don't matter. Not saying that your opinion or your, uh, your, uh, uh, grievance should not be heard. What's, 
what we need to make sure is that we're not worshiping the cult of the crowd in any direction, in any direction. You can hold values. You can say that certain values are better than others. And, and I believe that in some instances. Again, this is not a political post. But our first loyalty is Christ. We need to be on his narrow way. And we need to make sure that we're representing him well and building our foundation on him. Because if we try to build our life's confidence and put all of our uh, stock in, in, in the circumstances, and part of the circumstances is, might be our political or ideological affiliation, folks, if that gets jerked out from under us, I mean, I love our nation too, but if I worship our nation ahead of the Lord Jesus Christ, and again, I'm not trying to cast stones. I'm pointing at myself because I have been guilty of this. If I worship our nation ahead of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ and things go haywire, if things go wrong in my life or things go wrong in the nation's life, and I see, you know, I'm not going to be in a place where I can have conversation with somebody who differs with me that may need the gospel message because I'm too concerned with what they're doing and how they believe different than me and how they're my political opponent and how I need to and how I need to defeat them folks folks we're here to win hearts and minds for Jesus let everything you know you win hearts and minds for Jesus and if we're all in Christ and the Holy Spirit, you know, we can hash the rest of it out. And that's hard enough in sinful flesh. The church has its own problems. But folks, you know, we need to make sure that we're acting like children of, of the kingdom and not children of the world. Not, we're, we're supposed to be soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ. If we, if we are born again, saved, washed in the blood, trusting in, his, in Christ's resurrection, we need, we, need to act up. we need to act like it. Again, I'm not casting stones on anyone's political views. We need to act like Christians, not like heathen. We need to act more so than acting like Christians. We need to act like Christ. Who acted like Christ in our reading? Well, Christ himself, certainly. But the deacon Stephen had a short ministry and a short life by our standards. But he got to see the glory of the Lord at the right hand of the Father. The heavens opened as he preached one of the mightiest sermons to a, to a completely stalwartly stubborn crowd who hated his guts so much and were convicted so hotly against him, their hearts were pricked within them, but they rejected and they cast him out outside the door. They gave their coats away to a young man and uh, to hold him, and they threw rocks at him until he died. And you want to know what the biggest picture of Christ-likeness was? It was that as they were throwing stones at him, he didn't pick them up and throw them back and curse their name. Tell them all to go to hell. He said, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. He wanted them to be reconciled. He wanted the people who were perpetrators of the hatred towards him and more importantly, towards God. And in so doing, they were committing violence against their own nation and committing blasphemy themselves by standing against God. As Gamaliel said, if you stand against God, you'll never defeat him. Even in that, he said, Lord, receive my spirit. But he says, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. Totally Christ-like. And the man holding the coats, complying with the hatred, complying with the violence, became an awful enemy of the church with blood on his hands but God took him and made him 
the mightiest evangelist and apostle that we have in the scripture, maybe aside from John and, and Peter. You know, they all had three had very, very similar and very different modes of ministry, different callings. But, uh, folks, Christ likeness that suffers unfairly will prick the heart of the ungodly. Christ-likeness that suffers unfairly will prick the heart of the ungodly. You want revival in the nation. If you want the nation to turn around, you love your enemy. Because your enemy, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying who's the enemy. There's enemies all around, no matter where you are, what side of the aisle. If you love your enemy with Christ-likeness, if you pursue Christ yourself, if you trust in his shed blood, his death, his burial, his resurrection, if you love him as Lord and trust in him for salvation, and you love your enemy, and you love Christ, and you love your enemy even when you're suffering or even when they are causing your suffering, that gets them. That pricks their heart. Folks, don't you ever think that Saul didn't ever think about the martyr Stephen again. He saw him. He saw what he did. And folks, I guarantee you that the martyr Stephen inspired Saul of Tarsus, who became the Apostle Paul, to have boldness when he was stoned, to have boldness when he was whipped, to have boldness and humility and love for those that hated him while he was ridiculed and mocked and dragged before intellectuals and dragged before leaders and, and just scorned and suffered starvation and shipwreck and snake bite and and slander and libel and rejection and poverty and ultimately beheading don't you ever think that he didn't remember the martyr stephen young martyr stephen who was but an ordained deacon a servant who took it upon himself to know christ and to know the scripture of Christ and to know that he could proclaim the truth of Christ before the highest court in the land with love and compassion and to pray for them when they turned against him. He didn't stop loving Israel. He didn't stop loving the, the Davidic throne. He knew who sat on the Davidic throne. He was in heaven at the time. He's, he knew he was coming back. He didn't stop loving his country. He didn't stop loving his people. He loved his people. He loved the Sanhedrin. He loved the Jews, but he, you know, he loved his nation. So when his nation turned against him, when the nation turned to evil, he didn't curse them. He loved them. That's Christ-likeness. He didn't love what they were doing. He didn't love how they acted, but he loved them. That's as Christ-like as a human can get. Folks, I'm not here to pick on your political affiliation or your political um, or ideological um, views. America's hurting right now. And the church can either, either be about the business of dividing us further or the church can be about standing for the truth in love, willing to suffer for the love of Christ, not for our own egos, not for our own egos or for our own ideas. The highest call is the call of Christ. That's the hill we're supposed to die on. Hard words. It's hard for, for me to say them. Love each other. Know Christ. Trust in him, please. Um, we may not have very much longer in this earth before he says it's too late. be found in him when he returns. We love you. Have a good evening.